Take a look at this creative line chart that I'm working with right here. Uh-uh, don't look at the person who made it. We'll just get back to the person in just a bit. But for now, let's just take a look at the line chart. It's really creative. So I have a slicer here in which I can select the current month and I can also go back a couple of months, six months, 12 months, whatever that might be. And this shows me that from the past six months, what has been the growth creatively marked in the line chart. So that's the month of December, that's the month of May, and we've had 98% growth. Now, I can also change that, and this looks really, really slick and really creative. In this video, I'm gonna talk about that how do you make this awesome chart. No further ado, let's go together. If you take a look at this chart, there is no visual complexity that the user would have to go to to understand this chart. It's pretty self-evident. And I have selected a month right here. I've selected the past few months and it shows me since the last few months how much growth or drop there has been. So I'd like to talk about a few essential things that we would need in order to make this kind of chart. Let's just start with the first thing. So if you take a look at this particular chart, there are two slicers that are working right here. This is slicer number one and that is slicer number two. And if you carefully note the slicer, as soon as I pick up any particular month, it interacts with the chart, but doesn't really filter the chart. So you don't really get to see only the month of July right here, because July has been selected. You actually see that the July month has been highlighted right here. And the second point is six months ago, which is right here. So these two slicers are not really filtering the chart. They are kind of interacting with the chart. So we need to find out that how can we make that happen? That's part number one. The second thing that you will see in the chart is that we need some connecting lines. So this is the horizontal line right here that's one part of the chart and there is a vertical line here that's another part of the chart so we need these connecting lines that connect one point to the other point and tell you what growth or drop there has been now after that we would also need to mark these two points highlighted so that's my first marker that's my second marker and we need some sort of label to talk about that has there been a growth or has there been a fall and of course as you kind of move the chart around uh, depending upon you have the growth or you have a fall it actually shows you the color red or the color green and that's our nifty conditional formatting so i have prepared some workings to talk about these aspects of the chart in terms of a matrix visualization and once you take a look at that things will start to fall in order and then we'll be able to put all of these things together to create something like this all right, I'm on the working sheet here and the very first thing that I'd like to talk about is that how did I get a slicer that doesn't filter the chart but interacts with the chart. So now I have also got the chart image right here that will be easier for me to draw references from the image and show you what's going on in the matrix and help you understand the logic. If I go ahead and pick up any particular month right here, my matrix obviously changes, but then it doesn't really filter it down to that month. It doesn't really filter it down to August, but it sort of interacts with the particular matrix right here. So let's just take a look at the data model that I have prepared. So at the back right here, I have the sales table, pretty standard. Uh, my products table, my calendar table, those are my dimension tables, and I also have a disconnected calendar 2 table. And if you take a look at this particular table, it's nothing that complicated. All that I have is a date column, a sorting column, and the year month column. And on this particular column, we have a slicer created, which is nothing but this particular slicer. Now, I have another table, which is like a parameter that I have made, which is previous six months. So if you can also take a look at that, this is my periods range table and I have 12 periods. So you can go back 12 periods and that's a simple number or accounting from one going up until 12. And on this particular column, we have this slicer created right here. Now, because we have the calendar two, which is like a disconnected table, it's not really speaking to this particular sales table. I could pick up any particular year and month from this table and capture that value and dynamically filter my sales table and that will interact with the sales table rather than slicing it. So we'll see how that happens. All right, let's just talk about the visual elements which are making up the chart. And the first one is the error bars in the line chart. Now, if you take a look at this particular line chart, I need to have a bar of a certain height that goes up until here and a certain bar that goes up until here. And then these are the two bars that I would wanna have. The question is what height should I pick up? Now, obviously I can't really have the bar of this much height because then if I try to connect these two bars, it's going to kind of intersect within the line and I do not really want that. So obviously my bar height or this particular bar height is at least going to be the largest value between the two data points. So that's one data point and that's the other data point and whatever values are in between that, my bar 
bar at least is going to be this particular value. Now, I obviously don't really want the bar to be kind of here and then I start to connect the bar right here because that's again going to touch this line. So I want whatever is the largest data point between these two points right here. I want to have that data point and add some number to that. Let's say 200, 300, 500, whatever that might be. So I'm adding, let's say 500 to that and that's nothing but the bar height right here. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and create a little calculation which is called as sales point. In the sales point calculation, if you take a look, all that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out that currently if the month of August has been selected, and I am trying to go six months prior to that. So this is the period that I'm trying to take a look at, which is August and six months prior to that, which is March from August. In this period, what was the max of the sales? So the max of the sales was 5,580. And because I don't really want the bar to kind of stop here, I want 500 to be added on top of the bar. So I kind of find out that what has been the number after 500 has been added. So 5,580 plus 500 gives me 6,080. Now the 6080 would not be here or here. It should just be at the first point and it should just be at the last point. And that is what I display right here. Uh, at the start of the range and at the end of the range, I have the largest value plus 500, whatever number. And in case you're interested in taking a look at the calculation right here on the screen, that's a little sales point calculation in which I'm trying to get my table filtered, trying to apply a disconnected filter using the retask function, trying to do some fancy top bottom kind of thing. And then eventually I'm just trying to add 500 to the number and to only the points which are at the first and at the end of the range, as simple as that. Now you can obviously take a look at the calculation and maybe make it better or improvise it, but that's what the calculation is at the moment. All right, part number two. In the second part, once I have been able to kind of have this bar, which is right here, and this particular bar, which is right here, the next thing that I'm trying to do is have these two bars connected using a single line right here. And if you kind of notice what exactly is the single line, the single line is the very value, which is about 6,000 carrying through all the way from all of these points from March up until August. And all of these points are of the same value, which is nothing but 6,080. So that's what I do. It's very straightforward calculation. So all that I would have done technically in my DAX is that if I was applying a filter to get only the first value and the last value, I would kind of remove that filter and get the values for the entire range, which is nothing but the largest value plus 500. And that actually creates that particular line right here. All right, next up are the markers. So if you take a look at this line chart right here, we have a starting marker and we have the ending marker, which is sort of connecting these little bridge line in between. Now, if you take a look at the marker logic is very, very simple. All that I would wanna find out is that what is my period right here, which is the same calculation that we did just a while ago. And in that period, what is the first sales value, which is right here. And what is the last sales value, which is right here. As simple as that. And once again, I have this, I am just gonna plot that on the line chart. Nothing that complicated. Finally, we come to one of the last parts of the chart, which is nothing but the label as to how much growth has happened or how much drop has happened from the first data point. So if you take a look at this particular label right here, this is nothing but the new feature in the May 2023 update of Power BI which allows you to create custom data labels on top of the chart. I haven't really made a video on top of that as of yet, but I'm gonna make that very soon. All that allows me to do is that even if the value says something else, I can use some DAX to create a fancy label on top of that. Now, here is how it works. So if you take a look at the period right here, which is nothing but March to August, that's the current period selected. In this current period, I would like to pick up the first point of sales, the last point of sales, and only display the label right here, which is how much growth has happened. And that's my little fancy calculation right here, which actually talks about that how much growth has happened. You can take a look at this calculation. It's nothing that difficult. All that I'm doing is selecting the first point of sales, which is this one, the last point of sales, which is this particular one, and finding out what has been the difference, whether positive or negative, depending upon it's a positive number or a negative number, I format differently using the format function. The most important thing to note here is that I tend to display this particular number only at the last data point, not in between, not in the start, not anywhere, but at the last data point, I tend to display this particular calculation. So I'm saying that if you have the sales at this particular last data point, 
then you kind of you know format the difference calculation and just show it at the last data point point. and finally we have conditional formatting to color it red or to color it green so that's my simple conditional formatting measure which is nothing but the duplication of the same measure that i have done in the end all that i'm doing is if the difference is less than zero i display a red otherwise i display a green and stick that on top of this particular chart now with this particular matrix visualization if i were to create a line chart and stack the items one above the other that line chart would look something like this. Now that we have all the essential ingredients together, why don't we make a line chart and put all of these DAX and the workings that we have done in the line chart and make it look like this chart. So I'm going to go ahead in this particular matrix visualization and convert that to a line chart instead. So that's going to be a line chart and I'm going to start to format this particular line chart. So what I'm going to do is quickly, let me just get rid of that picture and move this on the side and select the month of August right here. You can see that this line chart is pretty much working right here. All that we would need in this line chart is to obviously clean these things up, clean these things up and other things like that. But what we would need essentially is that line that connects the first point and the last point right here. So let's just do that. I'm gonna go ahead in the line chart and go over to the formatting options of the line chart. And here are the error bars. Let's just first activate the error bars right here. So once I activate the error bars, I have the option right here to add a data point that is going to define the height of the bar and we've already got our data point which is nothing but my sales point right here that is going to maybe define how the bar height is going to be and that actually joins my bar that's nice if you take a look at the line chart at the moment there are a few elements that we don't really want as of now so if you go over to the fields right here and take a look at the total sales line which is this blue line right here i want that sure enough if you take a look at the line, which is right here, this line, I want that as well, yes. If you take a look at the marker, which is this particular dot, I want that as well, which is yes. But I don't really want the sales point right here because that is something which is forming my error bar, which is this height, and I don't really want to have it in the chart. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and have it only placed in the error bars that I have already done. Now. Once I do that, my chart looks like this and you can obviously format this particular line to make it look prettier and all of that kind of stuff. But for now, it's time to add that label right here, which is the growth or the drop over last year. I'm going to go ahead and check out the formatting of the chart right here. In the formatting of the chart, I'm going to say that I do want data labels, so I'll turn that on. But I don't really want the data labels for all the possible elements in the chart. I just want the data labels for this line, which is the connecting line between the two standing bars. So I'm going to go over to the data labels right here and say that I don't want it for sales. I'll turn that off and I don't want it for the marker. I'll turn that off as well. And I just want it for the line and which is turned on at the moment. And if you just maybe scroll through the data labels uh, formatting area for just a bit and you'll find that we under values we have something new which is called add a field and that's where i'm going to add my calculation uh, click on add data and that is going to be nothing but the label calculation that we have made i'm just going to click on the label and that is nothing but the 33 percent growth that we were showing and this also allows you right here to conditionally format that i'm just going to click on the fx right here go over to my field value and that is my conditional formatting measure that i have created click on ok and that shows me green now if you move the chart around it actually kind of works as expected but the only thing that you might have to do just a little bit is to format the chart to make it look pretty once you do all of the formatting your chart is going to look something like this maybe even better and once you kind of interact with this chart it looks really slick and interactive to the user who's using it and quite helpful as well to find out what has been the growth over the past six months three months whatever time that you have chosen isn't that pretty awesome all right that's been it let me know how did you find this one obviously you can download this chart on a link underneath this video and play around with this make this further and make it more creative and things like that now i wouldn't want to go away without giving a big shout out to gustav dudek who has created this chart i picked up the idea from a linkedin feed the other day i was scrolling and i just got through this particular chart it looked really nice and i thought of recreating it i'm not really sure what techniques gustav has used to create this chart but i thought of attempting it my own way and making this chart i'm sure if you ask him he's going to also give you the link to the file thanks so much for watching this and in the end a big shout out about my dax and my power query training courses in case you are a beginner and you want to move to a level where you start solving more difficult more challenging problems even of your own data i highly recommend that you take a look at my courses it is going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye now.